Hi, I'm Dr. Moore, and I want to welcome you to our Wednesday night brain optimization seminar. The whole objective here is to give you some skills to optimize your brain function, because when your brain is working better, you have a better working immune system, you have a better working heart, you have a better working set of lungs, you breathe better, you pump blood better, your immune system works better. And so it's very important that we have healthy brains. So one way to test the cerebellum of the brain is to do what's called the index to thumb crease test. And it's this little crease in your thumb here, that little crease, and you spread your fingers out and you get the tip of your index finger to that crease. And just put your hands where you can't see them and you do that over and over again and at a pretty good pace. Doing it slow isn't gonna do it, just nice and relaxed. And what you're looking for is, are you hitting that crease? Are you hitting high? Are you hitting low? That will tell you, that's called dysmetria, also known as ataxia, of your cerebellum. There's another test called pinky to nose test. You put your hands on in front of you. This is your pinky. You close your eyes and you touch your pinky to your nose. If you feel your arm go up, or your arm go up, down like that, or your arm kind of shakes or slows down before it gets there, that's a, cere that's a cerebellum problem. If you miss your nose, you don't know where your nose is, you poke your eye, that's a, that's a parietal lobe problem. Right? If you are shaking, your head shakes, that's part of the cerebellum. And so that shows you that there's brain dysfunction. You should be able to hit the tip of your nose every single time. This is not the tip of your nose. If you have to do this, that's off. And then another test is very simple. Stand still. Now when you do this, I suggest that you have a counter or something by you, something strong. Put your fingers on it very lightly and then close your eyes. And if you wobble, that's not good. You should be able to stand just like this without wobbling. Now if you close your eyes and you got your hand on the counter and you go like this, to your right, that's a right cerebellar dysfunction. If you go to the left, that's a left cerebellar dysfunction. And your cerebellum is a big coordinator of everything in your brain. And so we want the brain coordinating very good. So those are some tests that you can do throughout the day. I want to advise you that the, the stand and close your eyes test, make sure that you're not going to fall down and hurt yourself. All right, so how do we take care of these? What can we do to improve this? Well, if we do the finger test, the index to thumb test, and we find out that my right hand is missing, I can take my right hand and do something called nonlinear complex motion. And this is going to stimulate the cerebellum and the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe, if you, if you spell a word. You're going to spell a word, all capital letters, with your whole arm. You should use this arm because you can see better. Your whole arm, if you have a shoulder problem, stay low. But you want to use your whole arm and you're going to do a capital A, you're going to do a capital W, a capital E, a capital S, and look at it, a capital O, a capital M, and a capital E, and that's going to spell awesome. Now if you want to combine your frontal lobe with the cerebellum and the parietal lobe, spell awesome backwards. That's a great exercise. So you can hit three areas of your brain. And if you don't really know which, thing, which side to do, you can do both. Another test is a Hal, Hal Maggie. This is an individual test. This is a great test for people that, uh, a great procedure for people that are dizzy. You take your finger and you stick it out in front of your thumb, your thumb up, right in front of your face, and you look at your thumbnail, and you keep your eyes on your thumbnail, and you tilt your head down comfortably. You tilt your head up comfortably. You turn your head to the right comfortably. You turn your head to the left comfortably. Always maintaining staring at your thumbnail. Now, if you're in a restaurant and you don't want to do this, just stare at something. I'm going to stare at the camera, and I'm going to bring my chin down. I'm going to bring my chin up. I'm going to turn to the right. I'm going to turn to the left. Don't turn so far that you can't see it. That's not what you're trying to do. It's a nice, easy movement. This just will help reset the, the, the um, 
semicircular canals in your brain and stimulate the vestibular apparatus. When, you've been to, when you stimulate the vestibular apparatus in your brain, you will stimulate your parasympathetic nerve chain, which is in charge of healing you. Isn't that great? That's great stuff. Another, ta another thing that you can do is, I mean, in your house, when you have a, a clear pathway for about 20, 30 feet, and you do this every day, you walk like a duck. You put your feet out like a duck. Let me move back here so you can see me better. You put your feet out like a duck. Now, you don't have to go very far. If, you're, if you just turn them out a little bit, this isn't to see how far your knees can twist or your hips can twist. And you put your palms down. We, so we, in the office, we call it duck down. And you walk like this. And you keep your feet up. And you'll know that you need to do this because if you, if you, if you have a problem when in your brain, and it's this part of your brain, if I just grab the portion of your brain, it's that part, you'll notice that you're looking at the ground. You feel all unstable. Or as you walk, one foot turns in. So you got to practice this. And you don't practice this fast, you practice this slow. The opposite of the duck walk is the pigeon walk with your palms up. Pigeon palms, duck down. Pigeon walk again. Walk like a pigeon. And it should be smooth. You should be able to walk like a pigeon, go right into a duck, back into a pigeon. That's how smooth it should be. And the last thing you can do is something called asymmetric tonic reflex. This is a very difficult one. That's why you may have to watch this video a couple of times. You are going to start. You're going to be seated. You're going to put your, right, your left leg over your right leg. You're going to put your left arm over your right arm. And we're going to try to do this symmetrically. Where so you'll hear me go click, click, click. So you will start out just like this, kind of hugging yourself. And what you want to do is we want to unwind and wind it back up. So we're going to, we're going to first start out. We're going to, we're going to click, turn our head to the right. Open up our, I'm sorry, excuse me. Turn your head to the left. Open up your left arm, open up your left leg. Turn your head to the right, open up your right arm, open up your right leg. So it's always turn your head to the side, you're opening or closing, head, arm, leg. So let's start over. We, op we turn to the left, open up the left, open up the left leg. Turn to the right, open up the right arm, open up the left leg. Now we're going to close it up. So we're going to turn our head to the left, Close the left arm, close the left leg, turn our head to the right, close the right arm, close the right leg. And you'll notice that you are exactly the opposite of what you started. So you're halfway through. So you're going to keep your head turned to the right because you want to open up this right arm. Open up the right arm, open up the right leg. Turn your head to the left, open up the left arm, open up the left leg. Turn your head to the right, close the right arm, close the right leg, turn your head to the left. Close the left arm, close the left leg. And now you're back to square one. Do this a couple times a day, and it should look like this. So you might notice that we recut the video because I got interrupted, so I'm going to show you what it should look like. It should look like very simple. Here is the neutral position. Turn your head to the left, open up the left, open up the left. Turn your head to the right, open up the right, open up the right. Turn your head to the left, close the left, close the left. Turn your head to the right, close the right, close the right, stay here. Keep your head to the right, open up the right, open up the right. Turn your head to the left, open up the left, open up the left. Turn your head to the right, close the right, close the right. Turn your head to the left, close the left, close the left. There you go. So I certainly hope that this helped you out. You may have to watch this a couple times to get it right, but test yourself. Do the index to thumb. Check the pinky to the nose. Arms out way far. You know, try the standing with your eyes closed test. See if you wave or something like that. And if you don't even want to do those tests, you can just do the exercise because they're good for you. This is great for rehabilitation. This is also just great because it stimulates your brain. And anything you can do to stimulate your brain is going to help you be healthier, help you be happier. So we hope that this helped. If you have any questions, feel free to call our office, 810-225-7246. Like us on Facebook. 
and watch our videos, our further videos of testimonials. We're going to keep doing this. So we want to say God bless you and God bless your health. Thank you very much. Per request, I'm going to repeat the asymmetric tonic reflex. I'm going to go real slow. We start out with our left arm crossed over our right and our left foot crossed over our right foot. And you're going to turn your head to the left. You're going to open up your left arm. You're going to open up your left foot. So it's always head, hand, foot. We're going to turn our head. We're now going to open up our, left, our right side. Turn your head to the right. Open up your right arm. Open up your left foot. Now we have to close things. So we're going to turn our head to the left. Close our left arm. Close our left foot. We're going to turn our head to the right. Close our right arm. Close our right foot. And we're halfway done. This is the opposite of how we started. So we're going to keep our head turned to the right. We're going to open up our right arm. We're going to open up our right foot. We're going to turn our head to the left. Open up our left arm. Open up our left foot. We're going to start closing it up now. So we're going to turn our head to the right. Close our right arm. Close our right foot. Turn your head to the left. Close your left arm. Close your left foot. And now you're back to where you started. All right. That's a slow, that's, that's the teaching mode. Now if you want to see it in action, here's where I'm going to still describe what we're doing, but this is how quickly you want to do it. We're in the neutral position. We're going to turn our head to the left, open up the left arm, open up the left foot. Turn our head to the right, open up the right arm, open up the right foot. Turn your head to the left, close the left arm, close the left foot. Turn your head to the right, close the right arm, close the right foot. Keep your head turned to the right. Keep your head turned to the right and open up your right arm, open up your right foot. Turn your head to the left, open up the left arm, open up the left foot. Turn your head to the right, close your right arm, close your right foot. Open up the, turn your head to the left, close your right, left arm, and close your left foot. Apart from me speaking poorly on that, that's how quickly you want to do it. And it should be boom, 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 boom. If you have a metronome at home, you want to use that, that's the thing just that simulates the beat sound. You can get one on your phone. You want to get to about 50 beats per minute. That's how quickly you want to do it. So practice that, and that will help you with asymmetric tonic reflex. Thank you.